I have been working on this just this evening, actually. Uh, it's changed quite a bit. After reading the YouTube comments, I realized I probably should just make this start with a wedge and then flatten out at the top section. It really does help with the look and the shape. When it's down anyway, when it's up, it looks a bit weird. So let's have a look around. I thought this blue looked quite nice. And then I like this yellow, so we'll do that as well. So yeah, it goes up in one by four wedges. We've got some rope anchors on the way up. These microcontrollers on the side here are gonna go, they are for, I was testing these winches and they go into the pulleys. So I figured out a way where I can use pulleys and ropes and still have the maggles on the bottom work. There is, on this hook, the little hook is a little bit different. There's an invisible microcontroller on the back that controls a signal to the maggle and a signal from a radio antenna. I don't know if I can knock it over. Antenna here on the top. And it's got a microcontroller in here, I think to set the frequency is what that one's doing. But there's a microcontroller on one side and an invisible pump on the other side. So it's good to know that you can take that one by three fluid pump and you can make it invisible. Like the hitbox is still there, but it's invisible. Physically, it looks like it's not there. So that's supplying electricity to the hook, which is powering the radio and powering the maggle. And then up here, got a little antenna there and a little antenna up there. And the, the antenna, the antenna on the second one is doing the same thing, but for the big hook. So the big hook's got a pump in the middle and that's what's powering the maggles and the radio antenna. So that all worked out really well. We've got one winch on the front and two winches on the big hook. And so onto the wagon, I've added a side door so that you can actually get in quite easily. You can still play around with opening this gate and pulling yourself up, but sometimes it's just a little bit difficult to get at. So I've got myself a sliding door. This one is three blocks wide, so it's a lot easier to get through but it's the same door as what was on here before. So it's using grippers and tracks and linear tracks and all sorts of stuff. But hmm, I didn't adjust the timing and it still works. So yeah, I don't know, well that's good. In here, I've got the diesel furnace. Below that is the fuel tank and then the boiler. That generator is not connected to anything just yet because I'm not sure what I'm doing with this whole top section, anything could go up there. I might even just close it off because I don't know what would go up there. So then coming out here, I'll open these two gates or these two platforms. And I guess you can already see, oh yeah, these lights are really cool. But you can already see I've got a big steam engine in here. Um, this button is my exterior lights, which I really like. So they're on a player sensor and it's two HSV lights. When you press the button, watch the light. It glows, like it gets brighter. And when you turn it off, it dims out. And if I jump off, it dims out. So the player sensor is turning it on to 0.3 on the value of HSV. And then when you press the light button, it adds another counter, which is counting up to 0.7. So it comes out to 100% value and it gives you just these nice glowy dim effects. I really like it. And then this steam engine is just really simple. Three medium pistons, condenser, boiler. These gearboxes are what's connecting up to go onto the back for the generator. It's just really simple. I've put four switches on here. So the fuel valve, condenser fan, coolant pumps, and connect crank. So I'm using impellers and electric motors for all my pumps. And then I've got the radiator and the fuel valve are the only things that are like on their own separate boolean signal. And then what you do to start it, you can see the temperature here is ambient so we're not going yet. And we've got an engine startup bar segment. If we just turn this, the bar goes up, we hear a little ding and now the furnace has started and the temperature is rising. Uh, on the front I've put these little yellow pipes as a, a barrier. Uh, I guess the invisible pipes aren't actually in there just yet but that'll stop you from flying forwards off there. And I had to move the pivots up so that they're in the middle of the boom arm because I've got these doors now, so it kind of rotates within this section. 
this control handle is going to be where you can physically control it from on the crane but I want to have radio control as well which will just be a switch that does a composite switch box basically between this and the radio signal. So right now all I can really do is go up and down and turn around. But I think it already looks really cool. Well this is actually kind of interesting. I didn't really think about it but getting off and on to the side would be really easy. At the moment I've got a sort of active state set to when the handle is occupied so when it's not occupied it tries to reset itself. One thing I'm really struggling with is these winches on the top here. They go through a lot of pulleys here. So it goes out of the winch and then I used the same kind of pulley system where it goes through a pulley and then comes out on the other side and then goes up to another pulley which then goes out the other side and onto a rope anchor. Uh, it's just kind of difficult to figure out how to winch those ropes in and out to make sure they're not overly tight and to make sure that they extend and retract at the same rate that this goes up and down. And what I've been trying to figure out is how I'm going to put a display or instruments up here so that you can drive forwards when you're at this handle. Because I think it would be good, even if it's just really slow, to be able to take control of this and drive forwards a little bit and apply the brakes. Uh, this thing over here is an outrigger that I was trying to build. Except I have no way to make sure it stays in position. That was going to deploy from out under here. That's why it's so narrow. But there's just no way that I can lock it into place. And I don't really want to have to deal with the electrical drain of holding these tracks in position. Actually, it's probably not too bad if the generator is running if the engine's running because it's not really doing anything. Mm, <laughs> I don't really like how much space there is from the wheel to the end now. Oh, 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 what's going on with that one? Oh, oh, oh. That's not good. Something to do with flipped directions maybe. Maybe the wrong release. If I trigger this one and this one. Yeah, wrong release. Rear left, rear rear, rear rear right. And I think what I should also do is put a brake output. Yeah, yeah, brake output. A big old boolean or X or Y or Z or W into a switch box which will send a constant one of brakes this is sending an output for brakes but I should also have I also need like a another way I really like flip switches but I hate how they work a little B a little B for brakes nah Maybe just some little lines. Override brakes. Yeah, I can't commit to a flip switch. Arrow button it will be. Okay, so the reason I need to do this is is, is, is since I've got this controller up here anyway controlling the brakes this can be my override brakes and outrigger brakes are going to do that anyway basically if the outriggers are enabled then we're going to send this one into the switch box here which goes through out to the brakes but then if any of those two override brake panels are on then they're going to toggle the brakes on as well and then what I'll do is send this signal, send the brake signal into another switch box most likely, which will attach to just the normal TCP brakes, which means if you're just hooning along and someone flicks the switch as you go by, your brakes should enable, so it should be, 
Huh. Mm. And then even if I toggle these, well, they're not active, but even if I toggle these on and off, we're still at one, so we just breaks are on. That's a very smooth animation back in. So the, the out and down is just to clear any crap that might be in front of it when you do it. Because you can see it's kind of already, it's like tilting back in anyway. But then the in doesn't need to really worry for anything. You can just retract in. That's very nice. I need to put some lights in here and hook up the generator. I really like the starting system. It's just it's interesting. It makes a little sound. I, I'm enjoying these lights with the dimmer switch on them. I think the angle on the crane on the boom is a little weird, but generally it's nice. Uh, so yeah, like we're kind of, hmm. <laughs> I need to disconnect that uh, automatic reset on unoccupied. But let me put out all the outriggers and open it all up. This is what it'd be like in operation. Dragging the hooks along the ground. Yeah, I think the outriggers actually help quite a lot. Just grounding it, stabilizing it, just by magnetizing it to the ground. And they're nice and compact, they're not really weird big ones. And I'm only using a gripper to connect it back into zero. So it's not jamming itself on like a hard point would be. It's kind of just waiting until it's very close. Yeah, I'm super happy with how this is coming along. It just needs a little bit of decoration, lights on the interior. I'm gonna need a bunch of ropes somewhere and then sort out this thing with the winches going in and out. What do you think about the color? Kind of like a very gray, dark gray, bluey green with yellow accents. Yeah, this is nice and simple. I really enjoy building in this more simple style. Yeah. Thanks for watching. See you later.